Good evening. How you guys doing? Awesome. I want to take a, a second for you to check in with your neighbor and just say hi to the person sitting next to you. Awesome. Well, Albert Einstein was credited with saying that it seems like our technology has far outweighed our humanity. And so oftentimes we overlook folks that sit next to us. And so my name is Michael Henderson, and I am a lecturer here at the University of Texas in Austin, as well as today I'm representing the Future Forum Board of Directors. So again, welcome to the LBJ Presidential Library and Museum. Uh, we want to thank our sponsors because of members like you, um, as well as our sponsor, uh, sponsors, we have incredible programming. So we want to thank the Downtown Austin Alliance, as well as the FVF Law Firm. Um, this event was not a sole undertaking. I want to thank two of our board members that are here tonight, Mr. Amin Siddiqui, um, as well as MK Painter. Please give them a round of applause. Also, an unsung hero is Sarah McCracken. She leads programming here. She's running around. She is so great to work with. So we thank you as well for all of your hard work. Please join us. Uh, the Future Forum, we're excited and we're attracting new members. You can either visit our website or speak to uh, members of our board. We bring together individuals with different backgrounds, experiences, and points of view to discuss local, statewide, and national and international topics that affect us today. Our goal is to create civil, informed, and bipartisan uh, discussions. So I'm so excited about today's event with the laws and regulations that you saw coming out of the European Union, um, as well as President Volodymyr Zelensky is meeting with our president, and we have a presidential election coming up in the near future. So now more than ever is it important to sift through some of the discord and the fog. I'm excited to, in addition, open up the floor to discussion. So please, uh, we're gonna have time for you to ask, ask questions. Make sure you're not third panelist. <laughs> and last but not least, I want to introduce our panelist. Uh, my heroes and sheroes, we have Miss Chelsea Collier. She's the founder of DigiCity and the editor at large for Smart Cities Connect, as well as a research assistant for Good Systems. Please join me in giving her a round of applause. <laughs> Ms. Doreen Lorenzo, uh, she is the assistant dean for the School of Design and Creative Technologies at the University of Texas here in Austin. And Dr. Luke Wilson, he's the chief data scientist and partner at Vizius. Uh, also moderating, moderating today's discussion, we have Dr. Craig Watkins. He is an earnest, sharp, centennial professor and the executive director, the new executive director of IC2 Institute here at the University of Texas. So please keep in mind that we are excited for this conversation and please join our board. And with that, I will turn our discussion over to Dr. Craig Watkins, thank you. Uh, good evening, and uh, Michael, thank you for that uh, generous uh, introduction, and uh, thank you, Sarah, and the board, and the committee for hosting this conversation in this event. Uh, I know we're all looking uh, forward to it. Um, so uh, I guess thinking about uh, this time uh, last year, the whole conversation around artificial intelligence uh, sort of accelerated in some pretty significant ways, obviously with the arrival of ChatGPT. Um, and since then, there's been almost kind of like an arms race uh, in the AI space, uh, raising a lot of questions about this technology, about its impact on society, uh, as Michael so eloquently stated, its impact on our humanity. And so these are things we are going to discuss uh, today. What I thought we might do uh, by um, way of additional introduction is just have each of us maybe say just a little bit more about um, what you do, particularly as it's related to the, the, the topic that we've identified for tonight, uh, and what is it about uh, AI and technology uh, that um, 
if not keeps you up at night, certainly keeps you uh, thinking about the future uh, and the direction in which we're headed. Um, Doreen, turn it over to you. Um, thank you. Oh boy, I get to go first. Okay. Well, um, so I've been in the design and innovation space forever. And um, over the last 12 months, I've probably had, I would say, upwards of easily 50 people tell me that we don't need to teach that anymore, that design is obsolete, that it'll all be done by AI, why bother? This is my fourth time being obsolete. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as you go through technology trends and things change, this is what happens, and fear sets in. But we're still the humans. And so what keeps me up at night is we have to behave like humans and make sure that we are putting the guardrails in place so that we can protect. Because the technology, OK, it does do some good. There's some good in the technology. It's not all doom and gloom. So how do we put the guardrails? Um, at our school, six years ago, we started teaching one of the first courses ever taught in ethical AI design. So how do you design for AI in ways that will impact humanity in a positive way? We've been teaching that now. Michael Henderson has even been part of it. We have many AI courses around this because I think that those are the types of things <clears throat> I want to make sure that everybody understands. The humans still have control. And we need to take that control and make sure that what we're doing, we use it in a way that does benefit humanity and society. And I don't think I'm as obsolete as they're telling me. I'm so relieved to hear you position the question this way. And I, I couldn't agree more. I've spent most of my career kind of in between different sectors. And by sectors, I mean groups of people who normally don't talk to each other. So in the smart city space, which I've most recently been in, um, that means looking at how technology could integrate into our communities that may be a municipality to bring everyone together from government to industry to civic sector and academia and discover how do we want to shape our communities. So I'm hearing a lot of things that Doreen is talking about because here we are again, what was smart cities is now affected by AI. AI is the common term and while we all get to live in a community together, now we all get to participate in the shaping of AI. And it's no longer this conversation of, oh, it's up to them. Oh, the technologists will take care of it. Oh, the government will take care of it. They will take care of it. And I see AI as this wonderful opportunity for co-creation and shaping. Um, but we have to jump in and create some levers for all of us to feel some agency in doing that. And it's really what motivated me in a mid-career <laughs> to come back to the University of Texas. I have the great pleasure and honor of being a PhD student and a part of Good Systems. The research project that I work on is called Smart Hand Tools, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but it's a real opportunity, and I see the university, the University of Texas at Austin, taking a leading role in saying we can be that convening factor, and it is not their job, it's our job. So I'm excited for this conversation and appreciate being a part of it. Hi, Dr. Luke Wilson. Uh, I've been in this space, artificial intelligence space, for about 20 years. Um, did my master's work in the, the algorithmic tools and techniques that are now used um, at a time when they were thought to be obsolete, so it all comes around. Um, hopefully, uh, hopefully we don't end up uh, obsolescing ourselves again. Uh, but um, been focused on how to use these types of techniques to get to increase um, their ability to mimic human capacity and human capability. Um, in terms of background, uh, since everyone else has got a UT uh, pedigree, I spent 12 years here at UT Austin at the Texas Advanced Computing Center as a member of HPC research staff, focusing on how to bring these types of AI techniques to large-scale computers, which is sort of fueling the revolution we see now, where more and more computing power is making these AI systems more and more capable. Um, and so today, really just focused on how we can bring these tools to bear 
uh, in a way that's responsible, in a way that highlights their capabilities without overemphasizing their flaws. Thank you. So Doreen mentioned uh, some of the work that's happening in her program in terms of ethical design as it relates to artificial intelligence. Uh, Chelsea also mentioned uh, good systems. Uh, just uh, in case you are, are interested and want to look this up uh, after tonight's event, uh, good systems is a campus-wide uh, grant, one of the three grand challenges here at the University of Texas uh, that's been funded and uh, sponsored by the Office of Vice President for Research. And good systems is a reference to what we typically refer to as ethical or responsible artificial intelligence. So asking these questions about not only how do we design AI that's good for society, but what does that even mean, right? Good for who, under what uh, conditions, uh, but also uh, I think who participates uh, in the design and deployment of these systems.